in the zone, and we've talked about this endlessly, but that it continues endless. to be something that people just can't get, especially teenagers, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on social Middle media. Middle-aged men, too. TikTok, yes, this is true, but especially TikTok for teenagers, they are more likely to scroll through the app almost constantly, and that's according to new research. Erica Pandy from Axio is joining us tonight on the DMV Zone to tell us just how absolutely addictive and unhealthy this can be. Uh, Erica, good to see you. I think what stunned me the most about your reporting was how quickly you saw some of this content that really is something that parents need to be paying attention to. Absolutely. I mean, the difference between TikTok and other social media apps like your Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube is it may not be the most used app by teens. YouTube actually is number one but it's the highest app that has the share of teens kind of constantly on it, getting addicted to it. And that's because it's got this really interesting algorithm that people point to when they say, this is what makes TikTok dangerous. It feeds you sets of videos and it's constantly thinking about what you're liking, how much time you're spending watching a particular video, if you're rewatching, and using that to feed this machine learning model that's really, really scary good at giving you videos you wanna watch and keeping you on the app. And what you pointed to, a, a nonprofit group looked at if I made a brand new TikTok account, how soon would it feed me videos about self-harm self or eating disorders? And they found that, you know, within a couple of videos, within eight or 10 videos, they were getting that harmful content. And if you're a teen and you're engaging with that content, you're watching it all the way through, suddenly you're being fed this kind of wormhole of videos about yeah. suicide, self-harm. Oh. That All is. right, so my, my question, I have teens. Uh, I've heard in the past that video games are just as addictive as certain drugs, so on and so forth. Has, they, has anyone come, up, come out and said that TikTok is just as addictive as, I don't know, cigarettes or cocaine or heroin? What's going on? Because I have kids and I need to know. Yeah, I mean, th there have been researchers who have said, like, Instagram and all social media are addictive. They haven't, you know, compared it to drugs. But TikTok is its own beast. And since it's so new, I mean, it was launched in 2016. It really got popular in the U.S. during COVID. No one has made those connections. No one has really dug into what is actually happening at the uh, scientific level at your, in your kid's brain when they're mm -hmm. watching it. Mm -hmm. What we do know is that they're logging lots of hours on there. And often they're getting content that is quite dangerous. Erica, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're trying to say here, too, is that what separates TikTok from the other social media apps and the addictiveness of it is this algorithm that the user feeds, right? Uh, these teenagers, ourselves, you're on there. The app, right, the bite dance, they know what you want, what you want to see, what you've seen multiple times, and they keep feeding you that. And it, it's you said it earlier, it's almost like an echo chamber. You are seeing exactly what you're putting in there, and that's why in seconds and minutes you are seeing self-harm videos or eating disorder content, uh, whatever the case is that these teenagers are looking up. And I think that, I, I think it's what propagates some of this thought, right? And a little bit of what the teens are seeing. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of social media apps are really good at feeding you the content that's popular in your area. Like, I'm in the New York City area. I might get something on the most popular restaurants. Okay. What TikTok is even better at them than doing is giving me content that would be popular for me specifically. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it really addicting is that you're not just getting, oh, here, here's some celebrities you're getting. Here is something that maybe you're thinking about that you don't even know you're thinking about, but you've searched it a couple times on your phone. Now you're in this wormhole. Wow. I mean, this I think that, that uh, goes to the case, right, that Congress is trying to make right now yes. as to why this app is too dangerous and, and a lot of the, the consumption of our own personal data that it is getting and retaining that can then uh, be fed back to us in, in the version of TikTok videos, which we some people think are harmless. Right. But clearly uh, there is data to support that maybe that may not be altogether too true. What are we hearing about the fight in Congress before we let you go, Erica? Is this uh, going to be something that's going to play uh, pretty high up? Absolutely. I mean, what's interesting about the Congress fight is that the connection is the data, right? They're worried about the data. The data is the thing that makes the algorithm so strong. But Congress isn't even looking at what it's doing to our kids. They're thinking about China and China having access to data. TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is a Chinese company. They're beholden to certain laws in China, which, which allows the Communist Party to come in and take data if they were to want it. Okay. And t TikTok has kind of taken some steps to mitigate that. But how much can you really yeah. trust the Chinese government? That's what this comes down to. Erica, and it's, you know, we, We've got to leave it at that. We run out of time. Mm. You were fantastic. We'll bring you back yes. on the show to talk more about this. Stay with us. DMV is back after this.